You're going to love this recipe. It's delicious. Welcome back, people. I'm Nanny of Nanny and the Moose, and we have recovered from our frantic antics of yesterday out in the garden when the sun came out. We were making up songs and singing and acting crazy, so we're back to normal today. It still is a sunny day. We had our breakfast outside, it's beautiful. My mother's recipe box, I have several of them, and it is so endearing to see these recipes in her handwriting, and we're gonna call these the forgotten classics. Uh, I've seen that term before, but it's a good term for so many of her recipes. I remember every single one from the meatloaf to the bread pudding with one particular term that she calls for in this recipe is scalded milk. Well, I did put the milk on and it did bubble over, so I guess that is scalded. Um, I think scalded, if I remember, had some sort of a film on the top, but I, I have never seen that term uh, in recent years, that's for sure. So, the other day I made the egg and cheese souffle for Easter and we cut up uh, a, quite a bit of white bread. Normally I don't see the edges. I usually either throw them out for the birds, but then I read you're not supposed to do that, or I throw them away. But this time I, I'm in some kind of a mood of saving everything from plastic bottles to aluminum foil. Um, I don't know, this day and age, I keep thinking maybe we should save certain things. I just read that the plastic bottles were running out in the factory, so they can't make the hand sanitizers because of not having enough plastic bottles. Doesn't make sense, but I've started to save plastic bags, trash can bags, it's crazy. So I have a lot of breadcrumbs here. I don't think we're gonna use them all, we'll see. It's basically a recipe that starts with the breadcrumbs. We use three cups of milk. I'll put the recipe up on the video. Um, I'm using three beaten eggs because I'm using a nine by 13 greased pan to bake it. I don't think it calls for a pan that big. We have, um, I believe, two thirds of a cup of sugar, a little bit of salt. Mom's recipe called for Crisco but I'm using butter and believe it or not, it's uh, probably two tablespoons, but it, the recipe calls for one if you're doing the normal one. And I believe a teaspoon of vanilla that sweetens it. Of course, the sugar sweetens it. And this time I'm putting apples in. Sometimes mom used to put apples in. I, I cut and cored two apples. You might not want that much. It's a lot of apples. One might be fine. And some walnuts and Raisins, can't have bread pudding without raisins. Um, it's very easy, we just dump it all together, put it in the oven, and it, it's delicious. And probably the best part is you serve it with caramel sauce. Now, sometimes she did this with a little bit of bourbon in there, a tablespoon, maybe two, and it's delicious on the top. Or if you're just doing it for the family, you serve it with whipped cream. So, here we go. I have the scald milk, which did boil up over the stove. Maybe that's scald, but I didn't get a film on top, but I'm sure it'll be all right. Next thing we do, I've already beaten three eggs. I'm going to put it in and whisk it as I go because the milk is still hot and I don't want the eggs to cook, so I'm gonna to have to keep it going in here. Around and around. I think this has cooled a little bit. Okay, so, eggs are in. All right, I'm gonna keep whisking for a while. And the recipe calls for one and a half to two cups of bread. I'm gonna eyeball it and Maybe one, two. As I say, it's a big pan, so I'm going to put a little bit more in. 
I like it kind of gooey. So here we have it at this point. Now we have the egg mixture in with the milk. We have the bread. I can even see myself putting some more bread in. All right, that should do it. We'll use this for some other recipe we'll come up with with leftover bread. My daughter says you can make great croutons with this. This is really getting back to basics, but that's what we did back in the day, didn't we? Okay, now I'm going to put the apples in. Okay, now probably maybe a cup of apples. Stir them in. This is gonna be good. Two thirds of a cup of sugar, right in. All right, now that gives it its sweetness, of course. You really probably should have put the butter, or if you would prefer to use Crisco, like my mother's recipe, you want it to soften, put that in. And I think it calls for half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt. Oops, I have pepper here, that will never do. Here we go. <laughs> But it would. You could put that in. Okay, here we go with the salt. This should be enough. We don't usually use too much salt in our cooking. Used to use substitute salt, but then Bill didn't like that anymore. Okay, still stirring. Okay, I've chopped up uh, maybe a third of a cup of walnuts. Put those in. Seniors, I'm sure you've had this in your youth. I don't uh, see much bread pudding anymore, other than some country down home cooks maybe do some of this. It's really so good, so luxurious. Calls for a teaspoon, I believe, um, half a teaspoon. I think I'm gonna put a full teaspoon of vanilla in because as I said, I've enlarged the recipe a little bit. Of vanilla, what have I not put in yet? I think I have it all ready to go here. I'm gonna show you the consistency. I think I might put more breadcrumbs in. And you see it is it is pretty thick, but I think I'm gonna put a few more breadcrumbs in. We'll see. I probably should not improvise. My mother was actually a very good cook. She loved to cook and she loved to eat. She was, when we moved to California, my mother was back and my mother and father were both back in New Jersey. And they would, my mother would send out her recipes. And when we talked on the phone, she would delight in telling me what she had made for dinner. Even after my father died, my mother still cooked um, and loved to eat her recipes. So I can even remember Years ago, here I am putting more in, I always want to do this. Years ago, my mother was an old-fashioned cook and, and didn't have a lot of the newfangled cooking machines. We did have a pressure cooker, which I remember she was always scared to death of. She thought that it would blow up the house. But I remember Moose deciding that he was going to buy my mother a microwave one year, and it was right after they came out. And he did. We were home in New Jersey on a visit and it was so cute. She didn't know what to do with it, but you know, she got used to it. She was a survivor. My mom was a great mom and she did use it for a lot of things. It always reminded us of how much she was using it. Forgot the raisins, so let me put those in. Now, I think it's probably, once again, I love raisins, especially in something like this. And I would say <laughs> maybe a third to half a cup. This is all um, kind of improvised in here a little bit. Um, my mother did make the recipes for a family. Of, which I had two brothers, so there were five of us. And there was always an extra uncle or auntie around. Now, a little more than, well, this is half a cup. Okay, I'm not gonna go overboard on this. I think we're fine with one half a cup. So we always had extra diners around. My Aunt Agnes 
would always be over with her husband, Uncle Ed. And my cousin Jack, he was a bachelor. He was always over. Jack fought in the Korean War. And meals were wonderful. My father always had to have his tea after supper and some kind of a sweet, a cookie or something. Good old days, huh? Okay, here we go. That's it. And I don't think I've left anything out. Eggs, crumbs, milk, Kritzko, sugar, salt, vanilla, nuts, raisins, and apples. Okay, now pour into your greased baking pan. All right. Hope the pan's not too big for this. Wow. Looks good. Hmm. I hope it does something, maybe rise or do something. Well, that's it. Now you put it into a 325 degree oven and we will bake it for 45 minutes. Now I'm hoping that it will puff up a bit and it should be delicious. Let me show you. There we go. In it goes. When it's finished, I will show you the finished product. That's it. Okay. Get my little timer. 45 minutes and We'll see you in 45 minutes. I am doing one other thing today in this show, and it is also from my mother's recipe box. These are the good old, uh, the good old days recipes. And Moose is excited because we're serving it tonight for supper. And I don't wanna do it until just maybe an hour or two from now, so it's nice and hot. We're making chicken a la king. You remember that, seniors? A simple meal, probably was a wartime or depression meal. And it was basically a mixture with the roux of the flour and the broth and the milk. And then leftover chicken cubed, throw in a can of peas or... No, it wasn't succotash, that was creamed. Um, also called for pimentos. Now, I don't have pimentos in it. Also called for mushrooms, which unfortunately I do not have in the house right now. And you could either put it on toast or biscuits or whatever. And I've decided Moose chose that he wanted the good old biscuit biscuits. Cook the biscuits, put a little Parmesan cheese mixture in with the, the baking of the biscuits. And then when they come out, they're nice and hot, you put those on the bottom and you pour your mixture, which has got nice and creamy with the chicken and the peas and the vegetables in on top of it. <clears throat> and that's your chicken or turkey a la king. A recipe from back in the day and you can't beat these recipes, especially because they're my mom's. All right, we'll see you in 45 minutes. I'm going to start the recipe for the bourbon caramel sauce. Now, they do sell something now called the caramel dessert topping. Um, and you can buy it anywhere. Usually it's put on ice cream. If you don't want to go through the process of making your own caramel bourbon sauce, you can probably use this, put a little bourbon in it. I'm sure it will suffice. But I did want to show you the recipe from my mom's recipe box um, as to how you do this. I've already measured out the ingredients and I'm going to put this into a pot, which I've started the stove. It's two cups of heavy whipping cream. And I'm going to put that in with a stick of butter. And we're going to 
um, whisk that around. Well, they say to stir it with a wooden spoon, so I will do that. I do want to cut up the butter a little bit so it goes faster. Um, so that's the first thing you do. Of course, the heat is medium. I always have a tendency to make the heat too high. So this might just take a little while while I'm doing this. Moose has been sleeping for the past two hours, so that's why he's not here with me, or I'm sure he'd be joking around with a pot on his head or something. But I know he's looking forward to some of this tonight. And because Colleen and Micah, my daughter and her husband, who just lived 200 yards or 100 yards up the hill, we live in a little 90-year-old adobe cottage on their property. And we've lived here for since 2004 when we retired. They have three children. The babies have all, oh, it feels like they're my own, the grandchildren. And oops, let me stir. See, I get talking so much I forget. Okay, uh, my butter is pretty much melted. Going to pour in two cups of heavy whipping cream. I'll finish that story in a minute. Okay. Now you're supposed to keep stirring with a wooden spoon the whole time. I will turn the heat down to medium. I'm going to add the brown sugar. And they do say to continue stirring for 15 to 20 minutes. That's a long time, but that's what they did in the old day. They had plenty of time to cook. I just want to make sure I didn't forget anything. Half a teaspoon of salt. And then in the end, after everything has cooked and started to thicken up, you would add the bourbon. You don't, obviously everybody knows that. You don't add it early or all the alcohol would evaporate. So at the very end, when your sauce is ready, you will put the bourbon in. Now, the element which is going to caramelize it, which is the sugar, brown sugar. And I think it's, what did I say? One cup of brown. It says to use dark brown, but I only have the lighter version. So we, we use what we have these days, right? All right. Wish I had a little grandchild here with me right now to help me stir this for 15 or 20 minutes. I won't do this obviously on camera. Whoops. All right. Okay. I'll just finish my story and then I'll shut the camera off for 15 minutes while I diligently stay with this. Okay. Now. The reason that I'm using a brand new bottle of bourbon is because Colleen and Micah went out and did a little bit of shopping and she said, do you need anything? And I said, just a couple things. I'm gonna make some bread pudding. I need some caramel sauce. I, I hadn't found my mother's recipe yet. And I thought I could just put a little bit of bourbon, which I have in the liquor cabinet, by the way. Um, I gave her my list of heavy cream and a few other things. I'm gonna stir for a minute here. And when my order came back, she had bought, bought me a bottle of bourbon, which I don't drink and Moose doesn't drink. So maybe I'll send that up to Colleen and like it too. It's so wonderful having children nearby. We still do our six to eight feet distancing when we visit. Yesterday I showed Colleen's new hairdo. She dyed her hair. When I say red, she corrects me and said, no, it's orange like Marika, I think she is. Not Moana, but the redhead from the movie The Brave. Uh, the redheaded, um, fiery little princess. And Colleen reminds me she's the only Disney princess who doesn't need a man to rescue her. Good for her, right? Colleen did emphasize that. Okay, so everything's in. 
I believe, except for a little salt. I think it calls for half a teaspoon of salt. I want to make sure I have the right thing this time, which I will put in. And that's it. This should, fingers crossed, caramelize, caramelize. And I will shut the camera off and we'll see when we come back. This should be a nice dessert. And I think perhaps I'll put the chicken a la king dinner on maybe tomorrow's video because I don't want it to be too long. And we will be eating it tonight, so I will film it. I feel it thickening up a little bit. We shall see. I'll be back. 15 to 20 minutes, they say. Well, I just took the bread pudding <clears throat> out of the oven and it browned nicely. I did cook it probably 15 minutes or more longer than I planned to. And I did turn the oven up to about 350 because it didn't seem to be cooking fast enough or as per mom's recipe. Um, we'll see when we dig into it. Didn't rise up that much, but it looks good. So now I'm going to start the recipe. Well, dinner is over. We had our chicken a la king from back in the day from my mother's recipe box. It was delicious. That's tomorrow's recipe. Uh, video because it's too much to put on with this one. This video is strictly about the bread pudding, the caramel sauce. Moose and I are ready to have our bread pudding. He's in bed all cozy and I have the bread pudding dished out. I will now add one tablespoon of the bourbon into the caramel sauce. Now I made a mistake before and said this would caramelize. It didn't caramelize, it just gets a little bit thicker. Remember I had to stir it for 15 or 20 minutes and it's nice, see it's a nice consistency. So it's hot, I warmed it up. I have the bourbon in here and I'm drizzling it. Whoa, all over the bread pudding. But I have to save some because we have a lot of bread pudding left. I don't want to have to do this over again. It looks so good. A little more for most. The kitchen is a mess. I'm not one of those people that can't go to bed until their kitchen kitchen's clean. We do not have a dishwasher, so tomorrow morning I will attack all of this. But it was a great video. I enjoyed making it. Of course, every time I dig into my mother's recipe box, I just, the love just comes out to my wonderful mom and her love of cooking. I am not the least bit the cook that she was. So here we go. Here's what it looks like. Thank you all for watching. I wish you could share this with us tonight, but hopefully you'll make this yourself. My mother's bread pudding. Please subscribe and tell us about some of your interesting recipes that you remember from back in the day and maybe maybe we can cook them together i love you all god bless